This is Michael Eisner, and in 2000, Barry and I went to, over to Java, uh, to Indonesia, and our mission was to observe and to video some of Barry's work. And now you get a chance to see just a glimpse of what he was doing over there all those years. I am glad uh, that we have food because my lecture will probably be eight or ten hours long. So these are survival rations for you. And we're unlocking the doors now. My interests have been to try to predict eruptions, predict when eruptions are occurring, uh, and try to evaluate hazards in relation to the people, many people living around Merapi. Barry loves this place, the Petit Mas Motel. The first time I checked in there, I went into the bathroom and, and uh, was occupied and noticed on the floor crawling across was this uh, massive scorpion. Well, I never saw one again, and it's just a great hotel. He'll use it against you. He's evil. Yes. Don't let him chase you. You son of a bitch. I'll get you now. Every morning we would go in for a smoothie in the restaurant. This guy came in one time uh, walking around trying to sell people blow dart guns. To demonstrated it by firing a blow dart across the room. I'm not sure that Barry was there. I think he had stepped out. But all of a sudden, there was this blow dart in the wall right above our heads. I bought one. They were eight bucks. One, two. And that's the trouble with scientists. Uh-huh. They know stuff about a lot of stuff. With the point. And that's the trouble with scientists. Uh-huh. They make me feel stupid when I'm with you. If we made a paleomagnetic test of this. And that's the trouble with scientists. Uh-huh. They know stuff about a lot of stuff. If we made a paleomagnetic test of this, like we did not long ago, that maybe we'd, we'd come out with orientations of, of north pointing vectors within these uh, individual class, which are not oriented. Uh, whereas Whenever he was around another volcanologist or a scientist or some academic, he'd go off in this language that just no one else could understand. A north arrow pointing to the north, to the north, to the north, to the north, to the north. But when we made the, the examination, we found that some pointed that way, some pointed to the east, some pointed to the south. The orientations were steeply oriented instead of just horizontal and to the north. And so, so that meant that the orientations were, were tumbled around. And that's the trouble with scientists. now on the south flank of Merapi, and the plan is this, that tomorrow morning we're going to drive to the north flank, 
Now we're going to trek up to the summit of Merapi along the east face on the right of what we're now looking. We'll get to the summit and as long as the uh, earthquake seismicity that, that we'll check in the observatory before we go says it's okay, then we'll sleep on the summit overnight very close to the rim. And the next morning we'll be able to observe the new lava inside the rim and see how Merapi works. I kind of looked at this uh, forbidding mountain ahead of us that we were just about to climb and wondering how Barry was going to do climbing this thing. He scooted up this like a guy 30 years old and the only people to pass us at all were the Sherpas, the porters that were carrying our bags on their heads uh, and smoking cigarettes. I'm standing next to a GQ-1. This is an old Dutch survey monument. And I used this when I surveyed the summit of Merapi. We shot down with EDM from the summit to this point, measured the distance, and then surveyed around the ring of the summit and were able to detect motions across the summit area and see whether the summit was expanding or not. So, oh, what a privilege to be here today with you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how lucky can we get getting a job like this? It gets dark very quickly at the equator, and suddenly we were plunged in, in tonight. Everyone curled into their tents, and you can smell vaguely every once in a while some of the sulfur fumes blowing over the edge of the caldera. But the next morning, you unzip your tent to an alternative universe you've never seen before. It is the most magnificent thing looking down over the valleys of Java, covered in beautiful clouds, and recognizing you slept the night on top of an active volcano. Well, we're on the crater rim, the new dome, but on the other side of the crater rim is a small pocket with some ash in it and it makes it a very nice place to put the tent. So this is the traditional camping area for the people who are working at Merapi. And when we're doing our surveys up here, depending on the kind of work we're doing, it may take us three or four days to make the circuit of stations to survey. So we have to camp, we have to bring up a lot of water and food so forth, and this is the place we always stay. Barry was a real champ about doing the video thing, repeating again and again pieces just to make them better, to improve them, and sometimes the words just weren't there at all. So it reduces the hazard downstream. Um, I think I did a lousy job here, Mike. Maybe turn it off for a minute. To, uh, oh shit, Mike, that's, that's, that's bad. Um, let's see, let me, let, me, let me get my words fixed up first. We'll talk, we'll, let me talk with you a little bit. So what the hell are they doing there? They're picking up that, that sand and gravel, and, and, and in general, there may just be one person who works all goddamn day long to get some yeah. Yeah. Uh, That rim, when we surveyed it, moved far farther to the south. Oh shit, let me, let me, let me get my, collect my thoughts here. I want to talk about the fact Somehow that- Somehow along the line, he ended up with only one glove, and I have no idea why he was doing that. And the porters are here already, goddammit. And now we've got to pick up our tents and, uh, and pack up so they can head down. But meanwhile, we'll keep the other stuff so we can do our work up here for the remainder of the day. He seemed to love everything Indonesian, the people, the language, even the coffee. Absolutely, way too much sugar, just right, as usual. You could just tell how much he loved it up there. So I think we can do a little bit of good at the same time, learn a lot about the volcano. It's a hell of a lot of fun. The people we work with are charming and just wonderful colleagues. And so uh, it's, it's just been a very satisfying way of, of, of carrying out a career. 
We're now inside a bunker in Turgo Village. It's, it's, an, it's a device that was built by, by, the, by the local community leader uh, in order to provide self-protection in the case of an unexpected pyroclastic flow for which he has warning. So he can dive in here from his house, which is just a few meters away. And probably it would work. Miss Wanto, what the hell are you doing here? But if you go around the corner, you get a real dose of tear gas or sulfur dioxide that brings tears to your eyes and chokes you. Uh, and if you're lucky, the wind is blowing away from where you're sleeping and working. Oh, oh, oh. We've sold them out. Okay, cool, cool. I'm not cool, so I don't get that one. <laughs> That's also cool, cool. So, so, soda. Hmm. Oh, so the jeruk, jeruk. No, jeruk, not bad. Okay, jeruk. I had no idea what it was going to be like to travel with this guy. I mean, all I really knew about him was his brother that I saw in movies. And the other brother who I heard his music. But, you know, what is this guy like? Is he more Voight than he is scientist? Is he a pocket protector? Who, you know, what kind of guy is he? And I soon discovered the qualities of this man who could, on one hand, be a strict scientist with great passion and love for everything academic about his subject, and on the other hand, a completely enjoyable, almost childlike guy that Lisa actually refers to as a bit Peter Pan. Extraordinary guy. Okay, so why would anyone want to be a volcanologist? Why would you want to come up to a place like this and, and call it your office? It's just nice to be here. The wind's cut down, so now I'm getting a whiff of sulfur dioxide. I don't like that very much, but, but on the whole, you don't get very much of that. You just get this beautiful view, the wonderful vistas, a little bit of adventure, just a, a great privilege to be able to work in an area like this. And occasionally you get the feeling that, that maybe the work you're doing is accomplishing something useful.